So let me get my notes. Um, but let's just start off by you saying, you know, what your name is, um, where you live now, and how old you are. My name is Nicole Martin. I live in San Antonio, Texas, and I am 31 years old. Perfect. And then um, what are you doing in San Antonio these days? How long have you been there? I'm in San Antonio due to my husband's career in the military. Uh, we've been here since 2018. And currently, I'm a stay-at-home mom to my daughters. So. And can you tell me a bit about your daughters? Like, how old are they? And, uh, you know, what's it like being a stay-at-home mom? They are nine and five, and it's been interesting. Um, I've been a stay-at-home mom for a few years now, on and off. Um, but currently, I'm a stay-at-home mom just due to my youngest treatment right now. And um, do you mind just stating what your youngest child is going through? She is experiencing pediatric cancer of the liver, hepatoblastoma. Uh, it's one of the more rare forms of cancer, but she's doing really good. Okay. And when did you find out about that diagnosis? Uh, June 2nd of 2021. Do you mind saying like that, like I get a sentence, like we found out last year or we found out in June of last year or something like that? Yeah, uh, we found out of June of last year. Okay, perfect. Um, and do you have like siblings or parents around in this area? Like where are you from originally? I don't currently have any family, neither myself or my husband do. They're kind of spaced out all over near Florida, Georgia, all that area. Cool. Um, and what's it like uh, having a spouse that's in the military? It's been very interesting. Uh, they say you know what you're signing up for, but it's very educational once you get in and start learning everything. What sort of things like did you learn? Um, a lot of terms for words, uh, OPSEC, things like that. You have to be very careful, which is something I had to take time to learn, so. Gotcha. Um, and so for a time you were living in Europe, right? So can you tell me a bit about how that came about and what that experience was like for you? Uh, yeah, we were PCS, sorry. I want to say that part over. Can yeah. I? Okay, okay. Like, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Okay, uh, we were PCS over to England in 2015, and we were stationed there due to my husband's career, um, and we were there until 2017. Um, and what was it like living abroad? Was that the first time you'd lived abroad? Yeah, that was our very first time. Um, it was a bumpy ride for our family, to be honest. Um, for me, I don't think I ever got fully comfortable living there, but it was a good experience as well because the travel was amazing, so. Was it just like difficult being away from family or what was like the most kind of uncomfortable part about being overseas for that time? I think the biggest part was being away from family because we didn't really have anybody close by to help us with anything with childbirth, anything like that, we just, we didn't have the help. Um, the family for the military was great within our squadron. They were very helpful, but there's definitely a disconnect between living there, being far away as far as being here and having the option for family to just kind of pop over. Yeah, definitely. And it was your, so you then were pregnant with your first child when you were living abroad, right? Uh, Oh, your second, sorry, yes. your second, yes. sorry, okay. Yeah. So, um, do you mind saying, uh, like describing that you had your, you know, you brought your youngest child with you, or your oldest child with you, and then you ended up having a second while you were overseas, or can you just explain like how everything came to be? Mm -hmm. um, so we had already had our first daughter, and she was two at the time, and we were moved over to overseas. I was pregnant initially, but within the first week of moving to England, I had a miscarriage. Um, and then about six months later, I was pregnant with our second daughter, our youngest, so. And what was that pregnancy like for you with your youngest? Um, 
it was not like the first. The first, I feel, was a bit easier on my body and my mind. But the second, um, there was no sleep. I would go about 48 hours without sleep at a time. Um, Um, sorry. Take your time. My husband was deployed for three months out of my pregnancy. So I was alone with our oldest, taking care of her, getting used to being in a completely new culture country. Um, Severe sickness due to nausea. Uh, I couldn't eat early. Um, and I was also starting to experience paranoia and depression and things like that. And so, how did you, when did you kind of realize that something like your mental health was maybe not going in the right direction? Like, when did you seek help? I sought help um, around seven months of pregnancy um, because I was crying all the time, um, sometimes for hours. Um, and I went to go see somebody and, and just kind of tell them what's going on and I couldn't stop crying in the doctor's office. Um, and they referred me to somebody to maybe get on some medication to kind of help and they told me, you know, for now your spouse is deployed, that's obviously a big stressor for you, so let's focus on that, even though we didn't really discuss a lot of other things I was experiencing. So. And so the, basically like the doctor, from what I understand from what you're saying is that like the doctors didn't necessarily like give you treatment options or take it to, like they didn't consider that to be a medical issue necessarily. Um, they saw it as a they took it at face value in the fact that they only saw the deployment as my stressing factor um, and not because there were attacks in Paris constantly, and we were present for one. Um, the fact that I was alone. Um, my background in general, um, they just saw deployment in my paperwork and they said, this is what we're gonna focus on. This is obviously the issue. And they gave me some antidepressants for my pregnancy. And then did things ever, like, did they get worse from when, because I know this is all when you were still pregnant, mm -hmm. so did they get better when, after you had the baby? Uh, they got severely worse. Um, Do you mind saying, like, when I had the baby, or just yeah. to rephrase my, like, question and your answer, just so oh, we can okay. keep track, because my voice will be taken out, and okay. it'll just be your voice. Okay. Uh, when I gave birth to our second daughter, my depression got far worse. Um, I knew something was wrong the moment she was born. Um, I didn't want her near me. I wasn't excited. Um, I just kind of gave her back to my husband. I didn't want to see her. But I just pushed it away at that time. Um, I kept giving her back to the nurses. I was alone in the hospital because he had to go back and be with our oldest. Um, 
I think the first 48 hours of her being born, I could tell this isn't going to get better. And so then what were those months after? So you, you know, you go home, you have this baby and you're struggling with your mental health and is your, you know, who's helping you? Is your husband helping you? Like, how are you getting through the days? Um, most of my help was from my husband. Um, it was just me, him, and our little girls. Um, we had some people check in on us from our squadron. Um, but it was just like a, hey, how are you, fairly quickly. Um, I kept a lot of what was happening inside me on the inside. So. And why do you think that is? Was it just too difficult to talk about, or did you not understand what was happening, like in your mind, you know, to to your body? What was what was so what made, what made it so hard to talk about? Um, I believe what made it hard to talk about is I didn't want to be a burden. You know, I wanted to do what I was supposed to do as a mom and just take care of my kids, um, be there for them, give them what they needed. I didn't think I could afford to speak up because that's not what you're supposed to do. Did you eventually speak up? Um, I did. I spoke up uh, when my daughter was six months old, six, seven months old. And who did you go to? I told my husband. Um, we were having a conversation about just life in general. Um, and we somehow got on the topic of if ever one of us passes, you know, the girls will be okay because they'll have one of us. Um, and I told my husband, you know, I, I don't think I have much longer. Yeah. You know, I don't think I can see myself staying here anymore. How did he react to that? Um, he was scared. Uh, I'd never talked like that before. Um, on the outside, things seemed okay. And had you experienced like being suicidal before? Like, had you ever had this feeling before this time? Um, I did uh, at the age of 16. Um, I was experiencing suicidal ideation and the thoughts and I attempted at that age. Um, but this time it was more vivid in the images I was seeing in my head and just the thoughts I was uh, having at this time, so. Um, and you mentioned too that you were like close, maybe when some attacks in Paris happened. I didn't, I wasn't aware of that. Would you mind just talking a bit about that? Um, yeah, um, when I was still pregnant, um, about eight months pregnant, we were in Paris and we were touring the Louvre and that area and as we were leaving, there were some, uh, uh, there were some stabbings happening and just a rush of officers came flooding past our family. Um, but our family was able to get on a train and get back to where we needed to be. And had you ever like had anxiety about something like that, like when you were living in the States, or did that kind of all start when you were abroad? Um, I think the thoughts were there. We were living in the States of possible attacks, but 
it became a reality for us when we moved overseas. Um, and so how, did you ever get help for the postpartum depression to go back to that, that what we were talking about earlier? Um, were you ever, yeah, did you ever, were you ever able to get the type of medical attention or help that you needed? I was able to get the help that I needed for postpartum and prenatal depression in 2017, where I was hospitalized from July to December. And what was that like? It was inpatient or what kind of facility was it? Um, it was three separate stays in a psychiatric inpatient hospital um, spanned out over those months. And what, I mean, what was that like to live there for so many months, especially with having a baby? Um, it was a shock because I never had imagined myself to be put in one of those places. Um, it's an embarrassing thing for me to hold on myself. Because um, you always want to be the good mom. And I had to watch my youngest learn to walk through a phone. Yeah, what was the most difficult part of being there? Was it not, you know, not being close to your family and your newborn? Or, um, yeah, was, was it how you were maybe being treated in the facility? Like, what was the biggest challenge for you? Um, I think it was seeing past the depression um, to admit that I needed to be there <clears throat> because for a long time I just wanted death so badly that I just thought I was a burden to everyone so I didn't know why I wanted I was there I didn't know why I needed to be there because I just wanted to leave. When did things start to turn around for you? For you, like, how did you get out of this, this situation? I think my biggest moment of starting to really get better was when I was hospitalized in October. Um, the biggest thing was art, honestly. Um, I hadn't touched my art in years, and I was given the opportunity to continue to practice it while I was there, and it was starting to help me express emotions that I didn't want to express for a long time. And did you, how did you kind of get back into making art? Did you just, how did you like rediscover it as being helpful? The first time was actually a scavenger hunt that I've been doing every year since. Um, because it's not a normal scavenger hunt. You have to create art with whatever you can find around you. It's, you don't go out and do things, you have to create it. Um, Um, and what sort of art are you doing today? Like, is that still a part of your life? I do, I do still do my art. Um, I do a lot of digital art, um, some painting, uh, sometimes costuming. I just, I like to try different things out, so. Okay. And do you mind, uh, cause you were hospitalized three separate times, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I think it would be helpful to have like a sentence that kind of summarizes um, that like more briefly. So something, I don't, I'm not gonna feed you lines, like that's not my purpose, but like 
something along the lines of like I was dealing with severe um, postpartum depression and I ended up being hospitalized like three separate times for it or whatever sentence that you feel like could summarize what you went through at that time. Sorry, I'm trying to think of a way yeah, to... Yeah, take your time. <laughs> completely figured out. Do you want me to mention, like, the three times or just say, like, three times I was? Um, whatever, however you want to do it. Okay. Yeah. Um. So I was hospitalized in 2017 on three separate occasions due to the fact that I just couldn't admit to myself how badly I was suffering and I didn't want to face the things I needed to face to actually get better. So each time that I left, I was still kind of putting on the facade of, I can pretend to be the mom I'm supposed to be. Um, yeah. Perfect, that was good, thank you. Um, and then, you know, in the aftermath, once, you know, you were back at home from being at, you know, the hospital and um, what was life like then for you? I, upon leaving the hospital for the final time, um, I, I kind of had to relearn how to be a mom because I was still in that fog when our youngest was still a newborn. I didn't really know what I was doing day to day. I couldn't remember from two hours ago. Um, so when I got out, I had to remember how to feed her, how to bathe her, how to change her. Um, so, it was an adjustment. And did you feel like the, you know, going through that, such a severe depression, especially at such a like vulnerable time and at such an important time um, for you as an individual and for your family, did it teach you anything about, about life, about yourself? Like what did, when you look back now, like what did that experience kind of teach you? Or how has it changed you, like, as a person, if that's a better way of phrasing it? Um, I think it's changed me to be f more cognizant of the signs in myself. I've gotten so used to ignoring them for such a long time. But now, after doing the work that I needed to do to get better, I can sense when, you know, I'm disassociating too much, I'm isolating too much. Those are big indicators for me personally that I need to speak up. I need to tell people that there's something wrong and I need to focus on myself more when I'm getting into those moments because it's easy to lose yourself. And why do you think that um postpartum depression or, you know, prenatal depression as well, like, isn't something that's really um, talked about a lot. I mean, even the fact that it was, like, very difficult even for you to get a diagnosis or, you know, when you were pregnant, when you were saying to your doctor, I'm experiencing these things, and they attributed it to, like, outside factors. Um, you know, why do you think that it's kind of almost, like, taboo or such a difficult subject for people to talk about? I think prenatal and postpartum depression are hard to talk about because the stigma within and with on the outside of it, um, 
as a mom, you don't want to admit that you're not okay a lot of the times. Um, you have your own stigma of you need to be perfect, you need to take care of your family. So it's super easy to just ignore it and brush it aside. And I believe on the outside, as somebody looking in for doctors sometimes, I mean, they're there for the baby. They want to make sure the baby's okay. Uh, so really checking in on the mom is not always a forethought for them. I've been asked on occasion how I'm doing, but it's always that experience of, I just want to hear you say you're good so we can move on to your baby's chart and see where their growth is. Um, so for the mom, they maybe don't feel like they have a place even then to say anything. And because of what you went through, do you, would you have, um, would you want to be pregnant again or have a child again? I personally would not want to be pregnant again. I don't think my mind or body can handle that. Um, I would like to adopt in the future. But for me, physically, to have another child, I don't think is in the cards for me. Um, have you encountered other women in your life who've like maybe been dealing with um, postpartum depression, or like have you been able to have conversations like this with people, friends, or family, or? Um, you know, have you been able to maybe help somebody who's been through that situation, or have you mostly kept it like inside still? Um, I've had a couple brief conversations with people about it. Um, some friends of mine will post about they're having a hard time, and I'll just kind of bring up to them if they care to hear my experience and if they need somebody to talk to. I'm always going to be there for them. Um, I've shared some of this on my social media and I've had people message me telling me that they've experienced it and they just didn't know that it's it's unfortunately common and you know they just never thought they could say it out loud um, do you feel like there's anything positive that came out of that experience um, at all, and it's totally fine if nothing positive came from it, obviously. <laughs> In an odd way, something positive came out because it gave me and my youngest a do-over. Um, before I was hospitalized, there was no connection between us. Um, I was annoyed by her all the time. I just, I couldn't stand to be in the same room. But now, she and I are kind of almost inseparable. We nap almost every day together. We're always doing art together. Her sister and her are Pretty amazing. Um, and by helping me reestablish that connection, it's helped me reestablish the connection with her older sister. That's awesome. <laughs> um, and I, oh, sorry, God. Um, I can't tell from here, but if I'm just going to remind you anyway, just to look at the lens. I don't. <laughs> I think you are, but it's like hard for me to tell, kind of. Okay. Um, and. Um, why was it important for you to share your story today? I felt it was important to share my story because I felt completely alone in the things I was experiencing. I had heard about baby blues before, but I was always told, you know, it, it's going to pass. It's normal to feel down after having a baby, but you'll be fine. and I wasn't, and it took me speaking out to do better, because if not, I don't think I'd 
be sitting here. Yeah, and what, what message do you have um, for other women who might be dealing with this or might um, deal with it in the near future? Um, yeah, what's your like message, I guess? I would say to anybody who might be experiencing this or may in the future, you're the only one that knows yourself better than anybody else in this world. Um, if you think something's wrong, something's off, it doesn't feel right, you have every right to speak up about it. Because if you wanna do better for your family, that's gonna be your first step. And then is there anything that you feel like, um, well, okay, I have one question before that one. Yeah. Um, do you, what do you think the, well, we kind of went into that. It's fine, it's fine, I won't ask you. Um, <laughs> is there anything else that I missed um, or that you want to add about either this or a different part of your story? I don't know what would be deemed important for this specific interview. Mm -hmm. Just if anything comes to mind, I mean, more specific, because the video is going to center on the depression. If there's just anything I missed or any, you know, if you have any final or like last words to say about it, if not, that's totally fine. I just want to make sure I give you the space to do that if there is. Do you feel it's important to talk about? Um, I don't know, um, like where thoughts can go, or do you feel like that's more of like a separate? I was separate gonna ask you, I, so when you said I was, you were having very like um, visionary like image, you were saying you were, it was, you were having a lot of these images, I was gonna ask you, but then um, I didn't know if that would be too much. No, that's, okay, Yeah. so yeah, I am, if you're comfortable talking about that, then mm -hmm. absolutely, yeah, you can go ahead whenever you're ready. Um. Trying to figure out a spot to start at. Um, yeah, I can also frame a question if it helps you. Yeah, it might. Okay. Um, so you spoke about having um, uh, very vivid suicidal thoughts and um, ideations, and I'm wondering if you can explain a bit what that is like and what those ex like what that looks like basically for people. Yeah. Um, so I started to experience suicidal ideation and thoughts around three months after the birth. Um, and it was actually when my husband was deployed again. Um, at that point I was exhausted and still ignoring all of the signs that my body was trying to give me. Um, It was at that time that I began to engage in self-harming behaviors. Um, and after some time, during my nights when I just was not sleeping, I couldn't sleep, I would be feeding her and I would imagine myself um, slitting my wrists in our kitchen and just tape a note to her bassinet and hoping our neighbors would hear her crying because I didn't know how else to tell anybody. Um, I would go to squadron events and imagine myself walking in front of traffic. Um, and this went on for months until July when I was hospitalized. And I have a follow up to that, mm -hmm. and thanks for sharing that because I think that is important for people to realize. Um, is that um, 
do you, obviously your daughter is so young, I mean, she wouldn't have known that this was going on, and I'm wondering if you'll ever tell her about what happened. I do plan to have a conversation with my daughters about this. Um, my oldest already asked questions. She asked questions then because she saw myself harming scars. Um, we have conversations about it every once in a while within our family to kind of check in with everybody and make sure we're all okay. Um, our family learned this lesson in a very difficult way and we don't ever want to lose either of us ever like this. Um, okay, and then I think, yeah, I think both of those questions helped a lot kind of to contextualize things. Do you, is there anything else that you can think of? Nothing's coming to mind right now. Okay, what about you, Ashley? Yeah, I mean, you're very, like, what, you encompassed everything.